OK, so ladies and gentlemen, in this case, what we have is we have these four coordinate points. All right? And what they're asking us to do is determine if this is a rectangle. Now, what we previously talked about, Malik, do you remember the two characteristics that I just said last problem that defer a rectangle from a parallelogram? They have 90 degree angles. And there's one other thing. Yeah, congruent. What's congruent, though? Yeah, but the parallelogram has congruent sides, too. Something else is congruent. Uh, yeah, but parallelogram has congruent opposite angles as well. Yeah, well, parallelogram has supplementary consecutive angles, too. Megan, what was it? Diagonal. The diagonals are congruent. Thank you very much. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to be able to determine, is this a rectangle? Now, the first thing we do, everybody on their homework should have at least gotten out a sheet of paper and plotted the points. All right? You guys all have that basic amount of information where you guys can all plot these points. All right? You know enough to be able to do that. So you have j is negative 6, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3. j. k is 0, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. l is 2, 2. And m is negative 4. 1, 2, Okay, does that look like a rectangle? Yeah, it looks like one. Do we know for absolute tr positive that it's a rectangle? Do we know those angles are exactly 90 degrees, not 89.99, right? Do we know the diagonals are exactly equal to each other, not you know one is off by one millionth of a degree, right? Do we know that? No, it looks like a rectangle though. So <clears throat> let me go back and review something real quick if I can make sure I have everybody's attention. Because on page 70, or what was your last number? On page 75, we did this for parallelograms, right? Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember that? And to prove that it was a parallelogram, if we could prove that opposite sides were equal, then we could prove it was a parallelogram, right? Yes? Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, we can't do that for a rectangle. A rectangle is different than a parallelogram, right? We, if, we pr if we show that these two sides are equal like we did for parallelograms, then all we're doing is proving it's a parallelogram. They're asking us to prove that it is a rectangle. So what other distance do we know that's congruent again? The diagonals. So that means if I can show that that diagonal is equal to that diagonal, have I just proven that it is a rectangle? I did. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the distance of JL. Now remember, the distance looks like this. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So I take a j, and I say that's going to be x1. That will be y1. And then I have L, x1, or I'm sorry, x2, y2. x2, which is going to be, so I have 2 minus a negative 6 squared plus 2 minus 3 squared. Then I need to determine mk. And I'll do that in another color. So I'll call, I'll just call this x1, x2. Oh, what am I doing? x1, y1. x1, or x2, y2. OK? So I'll label mk a little bit differently. And, but then again, it's the same formula, same thing. So it's x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now again, guys, when you're doing the distance formula, I know a lot of you guys get mistaken with this because you, you, you don't follow the order of operations. Make sure you apply inside the parentheses first. All right? And remember, when you have a double negative, that turns to a positive. 2 minus a negative 6 is now 2 plus 6, which is 8. 8 squared is 64. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Then over here, negative 4 minus 0 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. 
negative 1 minus 6 is going to be negative 7. Negative 7 squared is 49. 16 plus 49 equals 65. Since my diagonals are equal, does it now make sense that I can say this is a rectangle? Yeah. Yes. OK. And there you go, guys. You're done. Fine.